rise of Nagash, the birth of the first vampire. Some two and a half thousand years before the birth of Sigma, an ancient civilization of Nekahara dwelt along the banks of the great river Votei. Of all the kings of Nekahara, none could match the splendor, cruelty and arrogance of Setra, the first priest king of the city-state of Kamiri. Under his inspired leadership and unparalleled ruthlessness, the other priest kings of Nekahara were eventually conquered and forced to pay tribute and acknowledgement to Kamiri as the greatest city of the land. But Setra was unsatisfied, knowing that one day death would rob him of all he had accomplished. In his arrogance, he vowed that the grave would not claim him and proclaimed that he would cheat death, setting his wisest and most powerful priest towards working on a means of preventing his passing. Soon all of Nekahara became pre- preoccupied with the death and afterlife, resulting in the construction of many huge temples and monuments that were meant to honour the long deceased. These huge tombs become so frequent and massive in scale that the rulers were forced to gather them all into massive cities known as necropoli. In the end, however, Setra could not evade death for long, and after living out his last fleeting years of his existence, he was eventually entombed within the vast pyramid. It was onto, into this culture that Nagesh was born, whom was also the brother of the current reigning priest of Kamiri. Nagash was the first son of his father, a former priest king, and was given to the mortuary cult as tradition demanded. He soon rose to the position of high priest, and where he observed the morticians as they prepared the dead for internment, and learned all their ancient magical law. But because of Nekahara, was so far south of the north of the winds of magic, he was unable to cast them himself. Frustrated with this, Nagash went to great lengths to increase the knowledge of the death magic, to such an extent that he took un, un, uh, unspeakable experiments in his quest for immortality. When word about this spread, nearly all the citizens of Kamiri shunned him, but just then a group of dark elves were blown off course and were captured. These prisoners were given to Kamiri as a gift gift to be sealed within the tombs of Nagash's dead father. When Nagash heard from the dark elven priestess that she can reveal all her knowledge of magic to him in exchange for her life, Nagash then proclaimed to fake the dark elves' death and keep them sealed within his father's pyramid as a bargain. If the dark elves willingly revealed and teach Nagash all they know about magic, he would release them from their prison. During his torture, the dark elf talk Nagash how to reap the souls and use their energy to cast spells of his own without the needs of the winds of magic. Nagash had been able to create a new form of sorcery, which he then named necromancy. Necromancy. Even after the bargain was done, the dark elves were never seen again. Nagash experiments met with their limited success. He was able to pro- prolong his life and forestall the effects of ageing, but still could not slow, stop the slow decaying of his flesh. He shared his elixir with the depraved nobleman, building support for himself before finally killing his own brother and seizing power of Kamiri. And his immortal supporters were tyrannical rulers, slaughtering many of the citizens of Kamiri with no provocation or reason. With the newfound power, they constructed the Black Pyramids, the largest structure ever built by mankind. Nagash supervised the construction of the Black Pyramid. Although it cost many great lives to build, the blood, the sweat and the souls that had died only served the purpose of its construction. The original purpose of the pyramid was meant to attract dark magic into Kamiri as, as much as possible, using either the winds of magic or the souls of the dead to fuel its growing power. For the priest kings, of the other cities, long disturbed by the events in Kamiri, this was the final blasphemy. Under the leadership of King Laz- Lamazar of Lemia, the other priests kings gathered their powerful armies and formed a coalition to stop Nagash's tr- tyranny once and for all. The battles raged 
for hundreds of years. And the black magic surged out of the black pyramids and blasted the lands of Nicara. Once a verdant plain of, of wheat slowly became a tainted, black and tainted, the life-giving waters of the lands and many oases grew sickly and killed all who drank from it. After nearly a century of conflict, the armies of Nagash were sacked. As Nagash fled the burning city into the cold depths of his pyramid, the great necromancer swore to the priest kings that he shall return and enact his re revenge upon them and their descendants. The, to the priest kings, they considered this an empty threat and laughed as the acolyte, acolytes found Nagash's disciples within the pyramid, dragged them screaming and burned and beheaded them in the daylight sun. All of the morbid statues and monuments of Nagash's glory were toppled into the sands. The sanctuary of the necromancer's disciples was plundered and despoiled, and the practice of dark magic was outlawed under the pain of death. Yet the aging priest could not find the renegade himself. Although his disciples claimed to have never seen Nagash enter his sarcophagus, the coffin itself was mysteriously empty. Unbeknownst to the priest kings, Nagash escaped and rebuilt his power once more to the far north. He had spent the better part of a century constructing a vast citadel, which he promptly named Nagashia, located within the mountain peak known as Cripple Peak. Nagash, seek, Nagash seeks to take advantage of the huge reserves of magic, saturated warp stones, buried beneath its roots to fuel the already formidable sorcerer's power. The Skaven also desired the warp stone and tried many times to sack Nagashia and take the, take the crippled peak for their own. After nearly a century of attrition warfare, the war ended in a stalemate, for the Skaven could not overcome the formidable fortress. However, neither could Nagash drive them away. Recognising the potential for mutual cooperation, Nagash negotiated an alliance with the Skaven, supplying them with warp stone in exchange for their aid in his plans. <laughs>